the next thing we will talk about now is insert timeline and by looking at that funnel this is also a filter but it is a filter that will help you show data uh, for a certain period of time okay now here we don't have time i will i will just bring in time even if we don't have time field even if we don't have the date field we can still use it so let me show you that show you that first i'll just cl click on insert timeline okay based on the date i want to insert the timeline so you can see how this slicer has come this is the timeline slicer okay maybe i'll put it here and uh, you see it's by default showing me data for all the years all time periods by month it is showing so for we have data for 2012 and 13 in this data source jan through december 2012 and then jan through december of this okay you can see everything now by just dragging this okay you can see the numbers are changing isn't it i hope you're able to see that the numbers are changing i want to see the performance of the business in january 2012 only jan i selected this is what it is if i click on feb if i click on march this is the data for march data for april data for may data from june at the same time we can also go to the border <clears throat> okay we can go to the border and pull it for multi select to be able to select multiple months to be able to select a range you can just go there and pull it you can just go there and pull it okay then here on the top uh, right corner we can change it let's say i want to filter based on quarters so now you see how the slicer got updated and you can adjust the size quarters only it's showing me if i say q1 or q2 or if i say a combination of all of these things multiple quarters accordingly it will come okay i hope you are able to understand what we are doing here let me do one thing i will introduce date field also for more clarity let me just bring in date to columns so you can see that it is now showing us data for different let let me select everything okay the whole all the quarters all of this all right hmm. So we can drill down to quarter level. Let me drill down here also to quarter level. So now you can see how it is. Um, do one thing, yeah. Making space for this slicer to come on the top. Time filled. timeline again here also you can uh, adjust the colors and all i think this is fine so right now this is what we are looking at okay now i want to look at data only for 2013 so i will just move here go here you see 2013 quarter 1 alone is coming if i move it quarter 2 also if i move it and let take it so what am i doing i'm selecting the data for these four quarters of 2013 accordingly the chart is getting updated so we can also have timeline slicers like this it is nothing but a filter but it's a more visual and interactive way of choosing the range of time right the time period range of dates basically over here range of quarters in this case if i go and make it months then i can choose a range of months for much for which i might want to see the data okay so october november december that is quarter 4 of 2012 and then the remaining everything of 2013 so if i just bring this down over here like that all right now, there's one more point I would like to mention about here with respect to slices. We saw okay here. 
we saw that we can insert slicer, we can insert timeline, we can also define filter connections, okay, which are automatically detected. There is a connection between product and product type because these are automatically detected. When I selected a certain product, product type, accordingly, the products got updated. Okay. So if you want to break the connection, you can break it by deselecting these options. Let's not break it here. The next thing is, what is that option? Slicer settings, whether you might want to display the header in which sequence should the members on the slicer appear and all. Now this can be accessed even from the slicer context menu. Okay, slicer settings. So when you go to slicer settings up here, uh, see right now it is coming in ascending order. We can also change it to descending order. So the, the sequence in which the members appear will change. Okay, I will go back and change it to ascending order and the slicers would have a header. Header is by default the caption which is the product. If you want, you can change the caption by typing something else over here. Okay, now what I want you all to look at is the report connections. Report connections. So whatever uh, slicer I'm going to, or, or whatever member I'm going to select on the slicer over here, based on this, suppose I want the other charts, other pivot tables also to get updated. This is a very interesting and very important feature. What am I saying? Here we have products. Okay. Now let's say on sheet one also, I will include products. I will include product over here also. Okay. Let's say we are looking at data for different products over here also. What happened? Let me do one thing. We'll just create one more table with product in it. Sheet three, product uh, data. Okay. So I'm having different products and some information about those products over here. products and information about certain products over here. Okay, now I'll go back here where I have my slicer. If I make some change on this slicer, let's say I'm selecting a product here. Okay, I removed the multi-select option. I'm selecting a product here. Data for that product alone is appearing. And for whatever timeline I have used for that timeline, data for that product is going to appear. Okay, so no doubt about that. The whole thing, the whole range I have selected from Jan up to December 2013, and this is the data. Now, whatever I do here, let's go back to the product data. Here, it did not impact. This pivot table is independent of the slices used over there, isn't it? This is still showing me all the data. But suppose, suppose you might want to uh, create a relationship, create an interdependency between the pivot tables. We can do that. Report connection. If you want to connect these two reports, how? I'll go back here. So on this, on the pivot table, analyze contextual menu from where we put the slicer and the timeline next uh, over here, over here or on the slicer. I'm getting a little confused. One moment. Slicer context menu. Yeah, sorry. On the slicer context menu, we have something called as report connections. Okay, slicer settings is one thing where you can choose ascending order, descending order, whether to, to show the header or not. Fine. Next to that is reports connections. Very, very important feature. When you click on report connections, you can make sure that this particular slicer impacts other pivot tables also if necessary. So this is right now on sheet number two, and I want it to impact the pivot table, which is present on sheet number the product name sheet, product data sheet over here. I named this sheet to product data. See, one good practice is to give a meaningful name to all the sheets, give a meaningful name to all the pivot tables and to all the tables. I didn't do that. It's not correct. You should always keep giving the, uh, a meaningful name. 
so that when we are creating such interdependencies, it becomes easier for us only to track what we are doing. So I have this slicer. Where do I have it? On sheet number two. The one that I'm working with right now is sheet two. And I have product information on the product data sheet, which is this one. Now I want the slicer over here to impact the pivot table present in this sheet. Okay, I hope you all understood what I'm trying to do here. Now, how do we do it? Just select it. Just select it from where? From report connections. And where is report connections present? On the slicer contextual menu. Okay, we know that certain menus will appear. Contextual menus will appear depending on where you select and click. If I click in the pivot table, I will get the two contextual menus related to pivot table. What are they? Pivot table analyze ribbon and the design ribbon will come. Okay. Here, because I clicked on the slicer, the slicer ribbon has come. In the slicer ribbon, we have report connections. Okay. So let me go to report connections. And now I want this to be related. Okay. Now what will happen is, suppose I select latte over here, cafe latte. You can see the chart in this sheet. But you will notice how even the data and product data sheet gets updated accordingly. Okay. So like that, you can define interdependencies between the reports. I will allow multi-select now. And let's say I'm selecting five products. Okay, so what will happen under product data sheet? All the five products will appear. All right, if I go here and just clear the filter and keep all the products, if I go down here, it's going to show me all the products. So changes made or slices that are applied in one sheet, if necessary, you can make them impact the other sheets also. That is the bottom line here, okay? So from our agenda, we covered show data as options, some more calculations in there. We talked about slicers, timeline slicers, and also how to change certain settings over there based on a requirement. So remember that when you're working with timeline slicer, you can choose the month, year, quarter, how exactly might you want uh, to slice the data? Okay, you can go here and choose it. Accordingly, the options will get updated in the timeline. Okay, and then you can select exactly what you want or even a range of dates if necessary. 